President Nixon never gave the country a proper farewell. But when asked what his final message to the nation would have been, he said this. I would warn against the media elitist complex. You know, the media is always talking about uh, the imperial presidency, the power of the imperial presidency. I think we ought to hear a little bit of discussion of the imperial media and its power. You see, presidential power is limited, limited by the courts, limited by the Congress. The media's power is unlimited. They can tell an untruth, print an untruth, which some of them consciously do, uh, if it's going to sell newspapers or what have you, or win a prize. Since the days of the revolution, scrappy working class reporters use their pens to give a voice to the voiceless. Newspapers like the New York Times sat gently on America's kitchen tables, read by Republicans and Democrats who needed the news. Today's New York Times, even too liberal for California atheists who take their coffee with cannabis. I'm just reading this like thinking, oh, we're so mm -hmm. They're just saying the dumbest Mm -hmm. And it's printed in the New York Times. I know. You know well, I used to uh, think that was a great newspaper. I don't, I don't anymore. I don't either. I mean, it's sad because it was like on my breakfast table when I was yeah. a kid. My, it was in my parents' house. It was house. what they call a newspaper record. It was. What is annoying about it is that it's not just, just give me the facts. There's way too much um, editorializing on the front page the way the articles that are yeah. just supposed to be the fact kind of articles are slanted one way. Um, and I'm not even necessarily for the other side. No. I just want someone to tell me the whole truth. Newsrooms went from like hungry blue collar workaholics to snotty, insecure, lazy liberal arts grads known for social climbing and protecting a rigged system. They went to college in Connecticut, wear trucker hats to be ironic and consider the best day of the year the White House Correspondents' Dinner, even though they've never corresponded with anybody west of Chicago or south of St. Louis. Anyone who calls them on their BS is a spaghetti stain. You look at a New York Times article on Instagram, and then you look at the comments, and everyone thinks they're an expert. Everybody thinks that they know better than the person who did the legwork. Everybody thinks they, they know better than the person who put in the hours, did the research, did the interviews, did the follow-up, made sh did the best that they could to make sure that everything that they put into print is factual. And maybe they missed something. Maybe they f but they did their best. Yeah. And then, you know, me, Johnny Spaghetti staying on his shirt, <laughs> writes a comment, that's b <laughs> it's, I, I, I It's shocking to me that any press outlet just that they, they consent to comments. How dare the press consent to being questioned? Reporters did the legwork. They write the truth. They're experts. But what's the legwork? They wrote what the CIA told them. They called a Democrat for a quote. They wrote the same thing their colleagues wrote. What kind of research did journalists do before they wrote Trump colluded with Russia? Well, they're experts at regurgitating hoaxes, Russia, laptop, lab leak. Journalists told us school closings were good for kids. They could Zoom for seventh and eighth grade. They said they're following the science. They tell us the border's secure. There wasn't any inflation. If we had just listened to Johnny Spaghetti Stain calling BS on reporters for the last four years, we would have been right on everything. And we were. Calling BS is the scientific method. You question everything until you can prove it. The journalists are supposed to call BS on the system. They're not supposed to defend the system and discredit Johnny Spaghetti Stain for calling BS on them. Elon Musk, right, dedicating his life to disrupting the system, innovating and protecting free speech. Don Lemon, a so-called journalist, is advocating for censorship and slanders Musk on behalf of the system, a system seeking to eliminate debate. Musk called BS on Lemon and exposed his narcissistic demands. Remember, he wanted a free truck, a ride into space, millions in cash, and an equity stake. So Lemon turns around and calls Musk a racist homophobe for not allowing the shakedown. Watch. People have been asking me what I meant by when I said he did not like 
answering questions or being held to account from people like me. And so some people took it to mean a racial thing. I meant oh, someone who has a different worldview. But since people mm -hmm. raised it and you said what you said, do you think that he was uncomfortable? I didn't want to go there. Do you think he was uncomfortable mm -hmm. sitting in front of a gay black guy? Uh, probably more gay than black, I would think. I hate to say that, but um, I don't know. I don't know. Jesse Waters is about as white as they come. I have a hunch if I demanded 50 million, my own rocket, and called Musk a racist drug addict, I'd get canned too. Because the media can't win the battle of ideas, their response to every challenge is a hoax. The Russia hoax, find people hoax, dictator on day one hoax. Now we got the bloodbath hoax. And then they scratch their heads and wonder why no one trusts them. And then they blame Johnny Spaghetti Stain for watching Fox. Not just inaccurate, but it's just deceptive the media was in their depiction of what he said. And that they are taking this quote out of context and trying to say that there's going to be a civil war if he doesn't get elected, which is not what he was talking about at all. It's so disturbing that they would, first of all, that they would think that they could get away with it in this day and age with all right, the scrutiny yeah. and all the, with, with social media and all the independent journalists that exist now, which is one of the more interesting things about the demise of corporate media. Rogan's right. But they're going to keep lying as long as one person swallows it. I keep waiting for, for Trump to somehow or another calm down. And then just the other day, he mentions this thing about a bloodbath if he loses. All right. Americans are busy like that guy. Probably they scroll. They hear things. Not everyone's dialed in like you and I are. And to validate their hoaxes, they elevate zero evidence and bury mountains of it. Great example. Tony Bobolinsky is an eyewitness to the Biden family bribe scheme. And he has tranches of evidence, and the media won't go near it. Christine Blasey Ford, the Kavanaugh accuser, with no memory, evidence, or witnesses, is showered with attention. They publish her book, they invite her on The View, and then they yell at men in the audience who don't clap. I watched while people were clapping. Some of the men did not clap mm -hmm. in this audience. Mm -hmm. To face those those people, the way they were looking and dealing with you, it, it, that is bravery under a whole different kind of fire. That's right. I applaud you on your courage and your bravery. The next day, The View invites Stormy Daniels, another woman without any evidence, to slander you as a terrorist. I believe that they're more like suicide bombers this time around, oh, where they honestly, truly true. believe that they are being patriotic and that I am like oh. the devil. You can call a man a rapist without evidence, call half the country killers without evidence, and a eyewitness with real evidence of crime is shouted down. Trump derangement is at, at an all-time high. You can taste it in the air. Nothing's off limits. A former NBC senior executive, Mike Sington, posted this. Baron Trump turns 18 today. He's fair game now. He wasn't referring to fair game like, oh, we can start lobbying political attacks. He's saying Barron's 18, the age of consent. The sicko is infatuated with Trump's son. He's been basking in Barron baby pictures, fantasizing that he's gay, posting crotch shots. Maybe that's the reason he's a former NBC executive. But the media believes Barron, fair game at 18. Hunter, off limits. A 54-year-old man has been flashing the nation, stiffing the IRS, and then playing victim. The media is mentally ill. It manifests itself daily. I am officially alarmed. And nothing usually gets to me. Dan Rather, fired for fabricating the news, is giddy over Trump's financial assassination attempt, saying, quote, Letitia James is now allowed to seize Trump's assets starting Monday. I hear Mar-a-Lago may have some value. Rooting for the state to seize a man's home is sick stuff. We fought a revolution so a king couldn't confiscate property. Now the media giggles at the thought. I'm so sorry. You know who <laughs> says he cannot come up with the cash <laughs> to cover his 
hundred million dollar plus bond in his New York fraud case. <laughs> so, oh. is Letitia James like gonna just? Do you need a tissue? I, I don't Here, know if dear. I'm laughing or crying. Here, put, put, try to wipe the tears. I can't wait to see the chains on Trump Tower, actually, on Fifth Avenue. It's more than just a financial assassination the media craves. Keith Olbermann, another disgraced journalist, so-called expert, says there's always the hope that Trump gets assassinated. Members of Congress are even dreaming about Trump's death. Soon, Trump will lose or go to prison or I don't know. Have a heart attack. I'm not sure. We call it the hamburger. I don't know what his demise is going to be, but he'll have his demise. Now, we wish Biden closes the border. They wish Trump dies. That about sums up the election. James Carville says Biden should sit back, play the gentle grandpa, and let the press put in the wet work. President Biden is not the best attack politician I've ever seen in my life, and I'll leave it at that. But there are a lot of people that, to do what I call, quote, the wet work, unquote. And he, I, I, it I sounds think like he a needs mob to hit. stay sort of a... Yeah, well, it's kind of... But it's a paid TV and stuff like that. But, yes, a CIA term. Uh -huh. you, you take a guy out. The Clinton cabal talking about murdering people is a little too close to the bone. And how many presidents can the CIA take out? We're dealing with thirsty Draculas softening up a target. Obama intel bag woman and Biden fixer, Susan Rice, setting up Trump as a foreign asset again, labeling him a dangerous threat to national security. The real problem and, and pattern here uh, is that uh, we have somebody who clearly doesn't put the interests of the United States ahead of his own personal interest. That's the fundamental problem. And when that is the case, uh, the United States is deeply vulnerable uh, to manipulation and exploitation by our adversaries. He is telling us exactly uh, what he intends to do. Uh, and what he intends to do is absolutely antithetical to the national security interests of the United States and, and fundamentally dangerous. From now until November, this is the four-step plan. Are you ready? First, the media tells you a lie. Second, the politicians run with the lie. Third, the American people are brainwashed into believing the lie. Then the prosecutors sink their teeth in and the deep state cleans it up. Watch the plan on constant loop. Lie, launder, brainwash, bite, repeat. It's up to Johnny Spaghetti Stain to call BS. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.